All right, guys. Hey, it's Thomas here. So today we're at Dennis' place to go to check out his dog. <laughs> you gotta admit, it's really cute, right? Anyway, so uh, Dennis uh, is a subscriber of mine. He invited me to drop by his place to check out his sound system. And uh, guys, take a look at the the system, man. It looks amazing. Tell me about your okay. system. Oh, actually, introduce yourself a bit. Okay. Uh, well. I'm uh, Dennis, of course. <laughs> Hi, mom. <laughs> um, I've uh, well, I've it's been a let's say a two decades of uh, experimenting with audio, uh -huh. and um, what I liked about it is that mm -hmm. uh, there's so many stuff to experiment with. Yeah. Uh, it's just that the pockets are not deep enough. <laughs> uh, uh, I feel your pain, man. Yeah. I get it. <laughs> but uh, but I finally you know arrived to a certain point that. Um, I managed to focus on what I really liked okay and mm -hmm. let go of the uh, the products the name branding mm -hmm. and choose whatever you know really suits my needs in terms of sound actually you know while we're at it um, let's start why did you choose this nice big speaker 215 inch woofers with horns <laughs> Well, uh, first of all, those are for the uh, home theater, mm -hmm. uh, so they're really efficient. And um, I wanted something that could play as loud as IMAX, and um, well, it's pretty much hit the ball game. But uh, the, the 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 what I liked about it most is that um, it has if not only efficiency, but it plays smooth. Yeah, hey, this is interesting. We I always thought horn they're shouty, they're bright and they're harsh. No man, these horns they're they're not like that at all. They're very smooth actually. Yeah. So they're lacking a little bit on the bass range. Okay. Because they're uh, they're meant to play uh, efficiency, so you lose that bass. Okay. That's why you need absolutely need subs with it. Okay. But in the home theater, it's automatically. Yeah, you, you add a sub to it, right? You add a sub yeah. or two. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so in this case, uh, Dennis have two subs. Uh, yeah. They are like made by somebody for you, right? That cabinet and then... Yeah, I had someone made those cabinets for me. Uh, I was too lazy to do them. Uh -huh. And uh, and we uh, installed the 15 inches in it in a ported version. And uh, it plays really well. And mm -hmm. I, I first had... Um, plates at plate amps mm -hmm. on them but i didn't find they were controlling the sub well enough okay so that's why i bought a crown amp uh -huh. to drive them just to make sure that it, they were on set with the rest i see so uh, there's four subwoofers in this room okay <laughs> if you think about it it's kind of nuts is it and these are not small subs you're talking about big subs but if you look at the size of this room, it's crazy big. Uh, do you do you know the dimensions? Uh, it's twenty three by twenty three. It's a square room. It doesn't feel like a square though. Why is that? It's interesting. Um, okay. Anyway, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, and um, so let's let's go with your amplification first. So let's just uh, focus on the home feed, uh, not the home feeder, but just two channel. What do you have for two channel? Uh, two channel. Well, I have uh, uh, my Oppo 103 uh, two force um, source. Okay, you're using uh, it as a transport. As, as a transport. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it plays also the role for home theater when I have Blu-ray. Mm -hmm. And um, I use a DAC with uh, with the uh, Audreal. Mm -hmm. It's a D10. It's a, actually it's a Zindac okay. um, product. So mm -hmm. it's uh, Chinese. Yeah. And um, uses tubes, right? It, yeah, there's a tube in it. Okay. Um, I use the blue um, gold lion mm -hmm. on it, and to give it a bit more warmth to okay. it. Okay. And after that, I have the Emotiva XSP1 as a preamplifier. Okay. Which is uh, connected to a Crown amp, of course. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he has four crown. How many? Four or five Crown amps in this. Six. Six Crown amps six in this crown room. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I and have, and we're going one by. Uh, we try a few, right? And uh, yeah. we, we listen to the Class D ones, and then we listen to the non-Class D ones. There's even a Class H, Class what? Yeah, Class H, uh, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Um, which drives the subwoofers. Okay. Yeah. How many watt was that again? Six thousand. Six thousand watt. You can kill somebody with that. <laughs> All right, so the Emotiva, that's your preamp, and it's going to the Crown, and then, of course, going to the Martin Logans, and you, you have also subwoofers for the Martin Logans, correct? Yeah, 
and they're driven by also two crowns. Yeah, exactly. I have Class D XLS 2000 for each sub, uh -huh. uh, which they're rated 2000 watts, uh, 2100 watts exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's what the subs get for each. Can you? It's, it's kind of weird, 2,000 watts. And, and by the way, this is the interesting part. So before it, we start, we listen to this, uh, I, can't, I can't remember the name again, the, the one with the two woofers there. Uh, uh, Tyler Acoustics. Tyler <laughs> Acoustics, okay, I'll remember that. We're listening to it, and uh, it blends really well with these soaps, actually, right? I, I didn't feel that uh, the sub overpowering, so uh, that was quite a surprise. And uh, the 15 inch, you don't really feel it in your face. It's not like you're getting raped by it. It's uh, actually <laughs> really <laughs> nicely balanced. Um, so why did you choose the Martin Logan? What, what is that Martin Logan? Uh, that's uh, Martin Logan. Is, uh, it's a 1991, uh, a 1999, sorry, mm -hmm. uh, speaker. It's, mm -hmm. um, it's the Request, okay. which was the uh, second biggest one from Martin Logan in that time. Okay. Um, with a woofer. Okay. And um, well, basically, I always love uh, dipole speakers. Okay. Um, I I found that the staging was tremendous. Okay. And when I listened to them the first time, well, I just fell in love with it. So that's why I got Martin Logan's. Is that clarity? You got detail. You got everything that the electronic will give you. Mm -hmm. They reproduce really well. Okay. So let me tell you a story then. What you don't see here is Mr. Kanta is standing over there. So what happens that uh, I brought Mr. Kanta over <laughs> so that he can listen to these speakers with me. And Mr. Kanta, unlike me, he has this test CD that he listened to like 500 times. So when he put it in the system, he can tell right away the strength of the system. Focal Kantas are known to be very detailed, right? That beryllium tweeter and so forth. Uh, that's the CD over there that he's showing. Okay. And we test that on that $300,000 system my friend has too. So what, we, what surprised us with the speaker, or actually surprised Mr. Kanta, was that he heard instruments that he has never heard before in that song, and that's hearing it 500 times, that CD. So electrostatics, they don't have that detail in the sense like, you know, high, high uh, how do you say that, really sharp, like the beryllium tweeters, mm -hmm. but they reproduce the instrument so clearly that, yeah, you get to hear things that you won't hear on other speakers. The reason why I know that is because I have the Quad 2905 too. So when I A-B test it against my Klipsch 600 RPM, we hear something, but we don't know what it is. Once we swap to the Quad 2905, we can tell, okay, that's a cello somewhere at the back there. Make sense? Yes. Probably. All right. Uh, well, yeah, that's uh, about the sound stage, and mm -hmm. um, well, the you you can sit. The closer you sit, mm -hmm. you have this intimate sound, mm -hmm. which closes in the the stage. But at, at the same time, if you want to listen to something bigger, mm -hmm. uh, like an orchestra or things like that, mm -hmm. you can just go a bit further in the room, and uh, you hear the wider, much wider stage, which goes pretty much uh, in, at the exterior of the speakers. Right, right. Yeah, so that's one thing me and Mr. Kanta noticed is that the sound stage is insane. It's super big and we can move all the way back. And the more further we move back, mm -hmm. the bigger the sound stage is. So, and I think because there's no substitute for room, right? The, I mean, you can spend a million dollars on a system, but if you don't have the space, the room, it's not able to, to work, uh, function as maximum potential. You have the room. Like I have the 2905. They're supposed to be more expensive than these, but uh, they don't perform as well as this because you have the room for it. Exactly. The, mm -hmm. the room, uh, it's another unit, as mm -hmm. we, call, we can say. Mm -hmm. uh, so you got to invest in your room, which is mainly this winter <laughs> that I have to do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he has uh, some uh, DIY bass traps on the side mm -hmm. there. And, uh, yeah. Uh, you want me to... Yeah, tell sure. me about the DIY. Okay. So, uh, well, yeah. actually, I got the idea from uh, um, another place where I buy a few DIY speakers, mm -hmm. and they have that in, in the room. And uh, I said, okay, I'll give it a try. And so behind the, it's actually um, a pad for absorption, absorption, mm -hmm. absorption pad. Okay, <laughs> of, uh, which is a uh, uh, butyl. It's very heavy. Okay, so it it acts like a passive speaker. 
Oh. Uh, so it absorbs uh, the base okay. uh, pretty low. And I managed to, to get that dip that I had in the 50 hertz a little bit higher, mm -hmm. uh, about 6 to 8 dB uh, in augmentation. So it helped out to uh, the sound quite a bit. Okay. How much did it cost you to build your own? Uh, to do it, well, it cost me a bag of uh, Roxel and uh, <laughs> All right. uh, two two by fours, and the rest is uh, the butyl, possibly the absorption pad. Let's say um, roughly a hundred dollars. Yeah, you really can't beat DIYs, man. <laughs> no, when you know what you're doing, and with the uh, exception, you know, if you're you get good information, then you know in which direction to uh, mm -hmm. to to get that stuff, you know, uh, well done. Oh, we forgot to talk about the subs for, for your Martin Logans. Okay. Did you built them yourself, right? Yeah, that I built in the garage. Um, I bought some CSS uh, 12 inches uh, mm -hmm. with a 15 inch APR passive radiator, mm -hmm. which is uh, adjustable. Mm -hmm. uh, so I can manage the frequency, the, lo the, the frequency that, that I want to pr reproduce in the room. Mm -hmm. And the... Um, uh, it's all double, so it's almost two inch uh, thick okay. uh, wood, and uh, it blends very well with the the rest of the, of the system. It's yeah. crossed over at around fifty hertz. Yeah, yeah, that's true. It's not like it's overpowering. Once again, we heard it. we try it on with the sub and move out the sub. Uh, we prefer it with the subwoofer on, actually. Yeah, yeah it gives more weight mm -hmm. to the the sound, and you open up the stage also a bit more. All right, guys, so I guess we'll wrap it up at this point. Uh, as I was telling Denise, you know, I've listened to many systems from ultra high end to very budget system. And uh, every time it's always the same. When I go to somebody's place, if, they, if there's a lot of passion when they build the system, there's always something that impressed me. And that's always something that I, I take away from. So, you know, this system today, once again, it gave me some something, an, a different experience, something that I've never experienced before. Perhaps it's, as I mentioned, the size of the room, but you know, it is definitely a very impressive system. Yeah. All right, so uh, Denise, is there anything else you want to add in before we close? Uh, yes, well, actually, uh, my system resumes in uh, a couple of things mm -hmm. uh, in terms of uh, staying open-minded to mm -hmm. uh, non-audiophile products. Like, for example, like Crown. I always thought that Crown was meh, but today it sounded very good. Yeah. And um, also, well, once you're your tight budget well mm -hmm. you try to manage to find things that are uh, have a synergy or mm -hmm. at least match together to uh, to complete a sound mm -hmm. uh, so so you, the results are really good mm -hmm. but at a fraction of the price yeah that's true so uh, I actually filmed a video on synergy I haven't released it yet or maybe I'll release it before this video <laughs> uh, but you're correct like you know the sometimes we have this idea that we have to put the most expensive gear in the system to make it sound good. It's nothing like that. You have to put the right gear in. And when they work together really well, that's where magic happens. So, totally. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. So I'll see you next time.